Hello, and welcome to a discussion on intelligent agents. This is part of a series on artificial intelligence topics, uh, working my way, hopefully in order, uh, through the topics. Uh, again, a useful resource. If you're so inclined, go take a look. That's where um, the slides are coming from. It's based upon the book, Artificial Intelligence, A Modern Approach, which is essentially the book uh, on AI. So uh, if in doubt, that's where you should be going and looking. So intelligent agents, and what does that mean? And why is it so important in artificial intelligence? So the, the basic idea of an agent, and what I've talked about it a little bit before, is that it is something that perceives uh, its environment uh, through, uh, through per, uh, percepts, and then it does something through actions, through uh, some sort of actuator. Um, and so the, the basic idea is that it's, it's uh, somehow observing the world, and its world may be relatively small, uh, we, we don't know. Uh, it could be the real world, uh, but it could be uh, some sort of virtual world as well. And there's usually some form of, of sensing uh, that environment and then acting upon it. Um, the uh, agent function is essentially an abstract mathematical description of the concepts of knowledge and uh, of percepts. And then the agent program is the, the logic controlling the agent, the implementation of the function or the thing that makes it do what it does, if you uh, want to hear it a different way. So when we think about rational agents, and, and we talk about, have talked about rational before, rational decisions, and it's about making kind of the right choice of the available choices. And what does right mean? Well, it's based upon a performance measure. So you're making a decision based upon something that can be measured uh, regarding towards your uh, attainment of some desired goal, something you're trying to achieve. Uh, and then the rationality is all around making sure that, the, first of all, the performance measures uh, are, are defining what your success criteria is. So you have some way of measuring it. You also may have prior knowledge. So the agent may know something of the world or of previous interactions with the world. Uh, and they can perform something so they know what they can do. Uh, and there's a a sequence of the of the percepts that are occurring. So uh, perspective. Um, so agents are not omniscient. They don't know everything. So if you have played um, many games where there's a fog of war sort of concept where you can only see what is close uh, to you or where you've been recently, so maybe the map doesn't display until you traverse it. It's that sort of concept normally. The agent doesn't have a full view onto the world. In fact, they may have a very biased view of the world. Uh, they may also be going out with the explicit intent of, of gathering information about that uh, environment. So it's the actions that they perform uh, to get information, not necessarily change the state, but uh, maybe it's exploration. And it's a way of learning about that environment. And we like our agents to be autonomous. We like them to uh, learn, adapt, and change after some initial sort of of, uh, of grounding in, in potentially what it can do and, and can't do, we like it to be able to do its own thing, right, and, and function on its own. We talk about an environment. Uh, it could be a, a real physical environment, uh, and it's a place where you have a goal state that you're trying to reach of some sort, uh, and the goal and the agent is in that space trying to achieve it. You have a performance measure of, of how well something succeeded. Uh, the environment, that's the, the thing that the agent interacts with. Actuators are ways of act, interacting with it, and sensors are a way of gathering information from it. They may be physical or virtual environments. Uh, and generally speaking, whenever we have an agent that is only in a virtual environment, we'll call it a software agent, a software robot, a soft bot, or sometimes just a bot. There's also some... Um, task environments that they have a property associated with them. So um, they're potentially fully or partially observable. So how much of the uh, environment can a particular sensor observe and, uh, and return uh, findings from? Uh, are there some things that can never be observed? So uh, if, uh, if so, you may have an environment that is fully unobservable, meaning that you can't see any of it. Uh, you may have more than one agent uh, in the same environment. 
uh, and are they uh, agents or are they things or objects? And it's going to depend upon how you approach the problem. Um, and are they cooperative or competitive uh, if there's more than one? So if you've got multiple agents in the same environment, are they going to work together? Are they going to fight for resources or things that are enabling them to reach their goals? Uh, and are the operations from one state to another deterministic in nature? Or are they non-deterministic? That means does the agent uh, decision-making process include some sort of, of randomness into its decision of what it's going to do? Um, and that uh, non-deterministic environments might be stochastic, meaning that the next step relates uh, to probabilities rather than to some uh, finite set of outcomes. So uh, moving on, you may have um, episodic versus sequential. So an atomic uh, episode is one decision and an episode doesn't have any impact on future episodes. So you can think of it that they're essentially stateless, right? So once you've done something or it's resets, it, you're back to, to what it was before. Uh, so an example of that would be something like assembly line part classification. Uh, the, the outcome of one decision doesn't have anything to do with the next. So if something is observing a part that's coming down the assembly line and it makes the decision that it's bad, uh, once it's made that decision, um, it's the next time it looks at a part, it doesn't matter if the, if the previous part was bad or not. It doesn't care, uh, nor, nor should it in that scenario. But the, an ongoing sequence is where a decision impacts future decisions. That's going to be in the world of games like chess. Driving certainly is that case if you decide to move the car forward 10 feet, the car is no longer in the place where it was at. So uh, it is definitely stateful in nature. And there's also questions of static versus dynamic. The static means that the environment itself doesn't change unless the agent interacts with it. Dynamic might mean that it is always changing. Semi-dynamic means that the environment doesn't change, uh, but the, the agent's uh, perception of it or score might, right? So, uh, and also, I guess it would be a question of, can the agent really change the environment dramatically? Um, known versus unknown, uh, does the agent know what the rules of the environment are? Meaning, does it know what it can do or can't do, or does it have to find those things out? So lots of complexity into this thing called an agent. Um, and to organize that complexity, we generally use things like abstractions. So you might say that an agent is a program plus an architecture. An agent program is an implementation of the agent function. And then the agent architecture is going to be a computing platform for the agent. And it includes things like sensors and actuators. It might be a PC, it might be something a lot more exotic, say a, a lunar lander or, or a rover. Uh, so lots of interesting stuff around uh, robotic uh, platforms and, and architectures and potential figure word frameworks, perhaps. So an agent program, you have a, a basic structure where you take a sensor input and return some action uh, to the actuator. If, uh, if history is going to be retained, the agent's got to keep track of it or else it's going to view the world as stateless in a stateful world. And that, that might work, but probably not too well because it you get yourself in loops that way. Um, there are types of agent programs. There's uh, table-based. It's not very uh, useful due to the large number of state table uh, requirements. And you could think of that as essentially some sort of a, almost like a state transitions being governed by a table and, and so on. Um, it's it's going to get large quickly. A simple reflex, a model-driven reflex, uh, goal-based, and then utility-based. And these are all approaches uh, to building uh, these agents. A simple reflex agent uh, and, and that basically means that the actions are based upon the current uh, percepts uh, and the rules that determine the actions, and there's no history. And this is uh, very similar to what we've seen before, where you have uh, an environment, you have a sensor reading it uh, via, the, again, in receiving the, the, the percepts. You have a current state of the environment that's being maintained, and that's the agent's view of it determines a, an action and then uh, realizes those actions um, uh, based upon uh, what, it, what it does through those conditional action rules. Um, and then we move into more of a model-based reflex agent, 
uh, and this keeps track of what the agent has seen and likely changed based upon its its actions. It is stateful in nature, uh, and you have a state transition model uh, that, that keeps track of uh, allowed changes based upon what it has observed and hasn't observed. Uh, the, the sensor model impact of the environment on those sensors is, is going to be kept take track of. Uh, and then the current state of the environment is based upon the model's guess based upon previous readings. So it's trying to guess what the current state is based upon what it's observed and, and the history associated with it. And then it's going to determine action based upon those combinations. And then goal-based uh, is similar to that, but throw in the idea that we know there is a goal that we're attempting or a series of goals that we're trying uh, to reach. Uh, there's some logic that determines if uh, the actions that are available uh, can lead directly or indirectly to reaching your, your goal. Uh, and this is also entering into that world of planning. We'll talk a little bit about planning as well over time. And planning is the idea of, of much like you would think it means, the, the program is trying to, to come up with a plan to reach its goal. Uh, and it can be a quite complex uh, operation. And it's actually uh, something that, from a logistics perspective, has been impactful uh, as well. And then utility-based agents, uh, similar sort of idea, except rather than us deciding, you know, what are the goals and how do we reach those goals? It's all about minimization or maximization of some utility. So there's a function that we're trying to get the best value out of, uh, or the lowest, depending upon highest or lowest, depending upon what kind of problem we're dealing with. And we have some means of determining if actions lead towards that utility and can increase or decrease it. And in order for that all to work, you have to have a concept of goodness, of, of how good is something, so that you can compare two things and determine that one of them has a higher utility than the other. Uh, or uh, as you're doing uh, more complex things, you're, you're likely going to be doing some sort of planning uh, as well. And uh, the, uh, and it may not include a model it may be just simply reinforcement learning, uh, which is the approach that was leveraged to in the Go scenario whenever uh, we were able to beat via AI implementations a Go master uh, using uh, reinforcement learning. And again, the basic idea is that you don't necessarily know exactly what goal you're trying to reach or how to get there, but you do know that if I do this, I get a higher return than if I do something else. And so you kind of combined between taking advantage of those things that you know, and then at the same time, potentially looking for something better. So exploration versus exploitation of your environment. And you may also introduce a, a, a critique uh, into the process uh, so that you're uh, observing, uh, producing feedback on how well the agent is doing uh, externally and potentially giving penalties and rewards based upon behavior. And the idea is to try to improve some performance element. Whenever we're talking about these environments, the environment representation might be quite interesting and challenging um, because they can be, uh, as you get to be more uh, granular in the structure, but much more complex. Very simple stuff is things are in an atomic state it's either A or B or C. Uh, there's no multi-state sort of things that can be occurring. Uh, uh, moving up a little more complex is factored where you have multiple elements of different types. Uh, then you move into structured where there are essentially objects with relationships to other objects that are likely in turn made up of objects themselves. Um, and the, the higher the expressiveness, the higher the fidelity, meaning the closer that that model will become to the reality which it is attempting uh, to represent. And that's what this is all about at the end of the day, is you're trying to come up with a way to represent something that is really complex. Our universe, our world, even a, just a simple room is an incredibly complex thing to model. Uh, and so what you're trying to do is come up with a way of doing so that is both uh, accurate, high fidelity, meaning it is close as it can be to the real thing, but also is not huge and, and computationally prohibitive uh, whenever you're, you're dealing with a particular environment. And uh, as I mentioned, this is becoming much more popular as we move back to 
these agents and these agents you can now talk to. Um, and so adding the ideas of the, the good things that happen inside of large language models, if you throw into that some of these uh, environment sensing uh, sort of constructs, uh, and also meaning that that very well could include things like video of an environment. Uh, it could include um, some sort of, of positioning, locationing of, of things within that environment as well, uh, and some other technologies, all within uh, a greater level of interactivity uh, by using things like large language models for, if nothing else, interactivity. So anyway, lots of coolness. If you have questions, let me know. I'd love to hear them. I look forward to your feedback and thank you for watching.